Hello everybody, my name is Jay and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna go over everything that is theorycraft and preparation related for Ramus. So this video should cover anything that has to do with what you need to know before you go into a game and play Ramus. Before we dive straight into the runes, I want to talk just a little bit about the champion itself. Because uh, Ramus is kind of special, at least for me. You see, I've been playing Ramus for many years, on and off. And the reason I say on and off is because, as awesome as the champion is, he does have, or at least he has had, a certain problem that kept repeating itself season after season, which made the experience of playing Ramus feel very underwhelming. And because of that problem that Ramus always had, Riot has had to make him strong in other areas in order for him to be somewhat viable. And what is that problem? The problem is clear speed. Ramus's clear speed has always been on the low side, and it has held him back uh, quite a bit. And what Riot decided to do recently is fix Cinderhulk. Now, I say fix and not buff Cinderhulk, because in my opinion, tank junglers should be able to clear the jungle as fast, or at least kind of close to as fast, as damage junglers. Because if they can't, then there's no real reason to ever play a tank jungler in solo queue. Professional play is a story on its own, but for solo queue damaging junglers who build Blood Razor or Runic Echoes or Warrior or whatever, everything that isn't Cinderhulk is called, have always been able to clear the jungle so much faster. So, Riot recently, relatively recently, it's a few patches ago at this point, I do believe, decided to make it so that Cinderhulk clears the jungle quite a bit faster. Being uh, the only major problem for Ramus, clear speed that is, this has completely changed the entire game for Ramus. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what his win rate was before they did the Cinderhulk buff, but it's uh, kind of uh, over. He's overtuned right now. It's a little much, and that is the reason why he's quite often picked and also very, very banned at the moment, sadly for me, because I do enjoy playing him. So before we go into everything, I just want to say I do hope that they nerf Ramus or do something about the game that makes him less banned in the future than he is right now. Because then I can actually play him, <laughs> which would be nice. Uh, I'm just kidding. You can still play Ramus nowadays, but you should expect that he is banned relatively often. Now, with that being said, I think it's worth diving into everything we need to know before we go into a Ramus game. So let's start off with the Keystone. For Ramus Keystones, Aftershock is the most commonly picked Keystone. There really is no alternative. Aftershock is just way too good on Ramus specifically, but also, you know, Aftershock being Aftershock is just generally, generally a bit of a ridiculous rune. So, there's not actually much to discuss here, you're just gonna go with that rune every single game. As for this row, you can choose between Font of Life and Demolish. Demolish is the most commonly picked one of these two runes, uh, but it's not necessarily the one that I prefer. Demolish is the kind of rune where if you are given the opportunity, which a lot of the times you will not be, but if you are, then it can make a noticeable difference within the game because it will allow you to take down a turret faster than you would have been able to without it. The thing about Demolish is that my personal experience with these kinds of opportunities, where when you actually, as a jungler, see that's a difference between being a jungler and using Demolish and being a laner and using it. As a jungler, you're not going to get those opportunities quite as often, and when you do get them, turrets in the current meta are so squishy after 14 minutes that they actually fall regardless, meaning you don't really need Demolish to take them down. In most situations, is my personal experience. Now, this is not to try and undersell the rune. Demolish is a fantastic rune, and if you like using it, you absolutely should. Personally, I enjoy Font of Life quite a bit, because it is the kind of rune that can sort of come out clutch in weird, messy, skirmish situations where it ends up saving your ally and you win a strange 2v2 or something, which does happen quite a bit in solo queue, seeing as League of Legends is an extremely messy game and basically thrives 
on chaos and aggression at the moment. At least that is the case in Season 9. So, I do like Font of Life. It is what I prefer. But you should know that Demolish is just as strong. And more popular. As for this row, you don't really have any other choice than conditioning. It scales way too uh, hard with Ramus and his W, so there's never any reason to pick any of the other two runes. And as for the third rune, you have two choices between Overgrowth and Unflinching. Personally, I sort of feel like both of these runes are underwhelming in the sense that you can't really tell you have them, like in the game. You can't really tell the difference in the actual gameplay, at least that's, you know, that's how I feel about it. Personally, I like Overgrowth better, although Unflinching, interestingly enough, is actually the most commonly picked uh, rune out of these two. I don't know why, but for some reason, reason people like picking this for Ramus. The thing about Unflinching is it gives you tenacity, but it gives you tenacity based on your summoner spells uh, being used and being on cooldown. Now, I'm all for tenacity, and I'm about to explain why in a minute when we get to the secondary runes, but the problem with this rune that I have is that it's way too conditional. Uh, at least for me. It's a question of personal preference, admittedly, so it's not a bad rune, but <sighs> Overgrowth is just never the wrong choice, especially for a Cinderhulk jungler. As for your secondary options, you have essentially three different routes that you can go. The first one, let's just get it out of the way. This is the weakest route, and that is the Sorcery Celerity Water Walking option that you have as Ramus. These two runes are pretty ridiculous on Ramus specifically, but they have been nerfed so ridiculously heavily that they are not very strong anymore, and in my opinion, not worth using. You can test them out if you really want to, and see if you enjoy them. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it. They are technically viable, but in my opinion, they're actually not the best option. The other option that you have is the Cheap Shot and Ravenous Hunter or Relentless Hunter uh, domination tree that you can use. Cheap Shot adds some uh, awesome true damage to your kit and can make a difference. Uh, as for Ravenous Hunter and Relentless Hunter, uh, they serve different purposes. For me, I tend to buy Moby boots on Ramus and not the tanky boots, uh, which is why Relentless Hunter is, you know, in a way you could say that it's overkill, but to be honest, I still think I would go with Relentless Hunter if I was running Cheap Shot, just because you can never have too much movement speed on Ramus. <laughs> Queuing around on the map and having out-of-combat movement speed on Rambus is just always awesome. The reason Ravenous Hunter is also a viable option, truly, is just because this rune is sort of overpowered at the moment. I think they are going to nerf it eventually, maybe, but if they don't, you should know that it is technically an option to have this rune on Rambus. It will make you harder to kill when you are in fights, and it does make a difference. So, there you go. The domination option is uh, very real, and if you haven't tried it, then I do recommend that you at least try it once and see if you enjoy it. Finally, the most commonly picked runes, uh, secondary runes, I should say, for Ramus are actually Triumph and Alacrity uh, in precision. Triumph is kind of like uh, Overgrowth or Cheap Shot, if you will. It's just never the wrong choice for Ramus. Alacrity gives you more clear speed and a little more damage against champions. Personally, I actually enjoy Legend Tenacity more than Alacrity, which is what I tend to run. This is for a couple of reasons. Personally, I don't feel like you need the clear speed from Legend Alacrity in the jungle anymore. Which means this rune is uh, largely there for killing champions. And if I'm picking my runes... Uh, in relation to just wanting to kill champions as quickly as possible, then I'm actually just going to go into Cheap Shot instead, because it's better at doing the same job. Uh, having said that, Legend Alacrity is the most commonly picked secondary rune for pretty good reason. It's uh, not the wrong choice, but uh, for me personally, Legend Tenacity is just amazing. I said I was going to talk about the value of tenacity in the current meta when I was talking about unflinching. Basically, my opinion is that there's too much damage in League of Legends right now, in basically every champion. And what that means is that crowd control has immense value in the current meta, because if you can lock someone down for long enough, they will die. 
and they will die pretty fast, and you don't really need to lock them down for that long in order for them to die. And this ups the value of tenacity. Tenacity can be the difference between saving your life and you dying quite often. Also, if you are like me and you buy mobility boots basically every game on Ramus, the tenacity is awesome because you don't have it from your boots, you don't have uh, Merc Treads. So, those are your options for the runes. I should go over the mini runes as well. There's actually no flexibility here whatsoever. Every single game always, no matter what, you're going to be running attack speed, armor, and armor. Nothing else is as strong on Ramus. So that is it for your runes. We are now going to go over the skill order and the items. Alright, uh, so talking about the skill order, there are a couple of different things you can do. There are some people that like to max taunt. Personally, I like to do Q into E max, meaning I max the rolling ball thing first, and then the taunt afterwards, and I do full Q max, and then taunt after. The reason I like to do this, and the reason most Ramus players do this, and the reason all high elo Ramus players do this, is that the Q on Ramus has a very, very high cooldown. It has 16 second cooldown, and that cooldown goes down by two and a half seconds per point. That's right, two and a half seconds. Meaning it goes from 16 second cooldown to a six second cooldown at max rank, which is amazing. It's amazing point value. And another reason why you should max your Q is because it increases the damage when you actually hit champions, or monsters for that matter, with the Q. And minor detail that you should know is that it also increases the slow that the opponents are hit by after the knockup. So you know when you're queuing in on Ramus and you hit a person and they're like knocked up for a little bit? Uh, in case you haven't noticed, they are actually slowed by a little bit after that as well. Well, they're slowed by quite a bit, let's be honest, and that slow increases with points as well. Although, the, the cooldown is the true reason we're maxing the ability before the taunt. And the reason t maxing taunt before W is so valuable is because, again, it's the value of crowd control in the current meta. The longer you can lock someone down for, the easier it is for your teammates to follow up on it and kill the opponent. You can do a taunt max, like I said, but if you do, you really should max your Q afterwards, or you should be splitting the points evenly between taunt and Q. You can't really max W first or even second on Ramus in the current meta. I don't think that's particularly strong. Oh, and uh, one more thing about Q max. One of my favorite things about Ramus as a champion is that you get to just blast around the map with incredible movement speed all the time. You can't really do that if you're not maxing Q. So, just a fun little side note there. Alright then, delving into the actual items, as you can see I have starting items and consumables up top. Uh, I have Elixir of Iron, just in case the uh, game goes super late, and I have, you know, six items and still more gold. Uh, in that case, you can also consider Elixir of Sorcery. If you don't like the extra size on the Elixir of Iron, then Sorcery gives you more damage, I guess. The way you're going to be playing Ramus is, or building, I should say, is you're going to be getting your Smite upgrade for jungle sustain and clearing purposes, as well as the ability to use it against champions, which is pretty nice. Then you're going to get Boots 1, and then you're going to go into your Cinder Hulk. Now, due to the buffs on Cinder Hulk, you don't really need to do anything crazy here. You can just build it straight up, and it will give you the clear speed you need. It is true that historically, throughout the seasons, there are Ramus mains who have been smart enough to buy crazy things like Blood Razor on Ramus to try and solve this clear speed issue, but you don't need to go there anymore. Cinder Hulk is just always the best jungle item for Ramus nowadays. At least that's my opinion and my experience. As far as whether you should pick red or blue smite, I suggest that you think about the boots you're using. Uh, for me, I have tried running blue smite with Moby boots. Blue smite is a very strong option for Ramus, and the idea is that it allows you to catch up to people and gap close. The problem with having blue smite and Moby boots together that I found is that it ends up having the opposite effect because when you smite someone with the blue smite, it puts you in combat and therefore it takes away the bonus movement speed from your boots of mobility, which is kind of awkward. So if you are running uh, boots of mobility or relentless hunter in your secondary runes, important detail, then you should probably be running red smite 
uh, because it just has better synergy, and uh, Blue Smite and Mobis is not the greatest combination. Also, Red Smite is uh, undervalued on Ramus. Most people, by far most people, actually build Blue Smite on Ramus, uh, regardless of what kind of game they're in and what champions they are playing against and stuff like that. The thing about Red Smite for Ramus is it makes them borderline unkillable, especially in a 1v1, which in the current meta with uh, how much damage the the game has in it nowadays is an extremely rare thing and it makes it very very difficult for people to deal with you basically <laughs> the way things are going to go down if you have red smite on ramus is people are going to be trying to kill you and they won't understand why you're not dying like everybody else in the game and it is uh, quite powerful for that reason people just don't expect you to be as tanky as you will be with the damage reduction from red smite now enough talk about the smite let's talk about boots should you in fact go moby boots every game you can, if you want to. That's what I do. I'm a Moby Boots kind of guy. You should know that. So it is a question of personal preference. Other options. Ninja Tabai, incredible on Ramus, ridiculous W synergy. And Merc Treads, also incredible on Ramus. It has some W synergy because magic resist, obviously. It just doesn't scale as hard with Ramus's W as armor does, but let's leave that for now. But the tenacity is extremely valuable, especially if you're playing against something like a Rise, Elise, Ash, you know, stuff like that. If the entire enemy team is like hard countered by tenacity, then even I would have to surrender my mobility boots for that game and buy Merc Treads instead. So just be smart about what you're buying, you know. Stay adaptive, basically, is what I'm saying. Full AD composition? Why not Ninja Tabai? There's no reason not to. Am I right? As for what you're gonna do after Cinder Hulk and your boots, Thornmail is a must-have item on Ramus, and you have to build it immediately after your boots. Um, there's really no game where you're ever going to be skipping this. Honestly, even if the enemy team has a mage in the bot lane instead of an AD carry, you would still buy Thornmail on Ramus because the item is just that good. Ramus's W is what makes him the champion he is, and Thornmail basically does the same thing, but it's not on a cooldown. And it's even better because it also prevents the opponent's ability to lifesteal from you due to the Grievous Wound passive. So it's just an awesome item, and you should always have this on Ramus. If the game goes long enough, you do have a bunch of tank options that you can build after that. There are a few items that I never built because I just don't like them personally, but they are technically viable on Ramus, so I'm just going to get them out of, the, out of the way. Number one is Warmogs. Some people like this on Ramus. I don't think it's as valuable as it looks like just because, again, Ramus scales hard with resists. Don't get me wrong, Warmox and Cinderhulk is an amazing item combination, and you're going to see it a lot on champions like Amumu, or especially Sijuani, for example. But for Ramus, he wants resists on his item because that's what he scales with, so that's just the way he gets the most tanky. You can buy Warmox if you want, I don't really love the item. Another option is Gargoyle Stoneplate. Everybody knows that this item just makes you ridiculously tanky, that's what it does. It has no movement speed on it. It has no cooldown reduction on it. I like movement speed and cooldown reduction on my Ramus items, just gonna say it. So, personal preference, I don't love this item, some people do. And what else is there? Oh yeah, Randuins was the final one I wanted to mention. If you're playing against somebody who is, you know, a hardcore crit character like Ash, for example, and they are the only person on the enemy team who is potentially threatening whether or not you're going to win the game, then by all means just buy a Randuins and then that threat will be shut down that much more easily. In most games, it's not going to be relevant. In my opinion, it's kind of a sad item to buy on Ramus. It's really just a worse version of Dead Man's Plate. Dead Man's Plate has movement speed on it and is kind of the default armor item for Ramus just because of how awesome it is. And Randuins has no movement speed and again also no cooldown reduction. So it, it's an option but it really is only there to counter crit champions. Now let's dive into my personal favorite tank items for Ramus. Righteous Glory, my god, this item allows you to really catch people off guard. A lot of the times when you play Ramus, you are forced to Q flash onto people in order to catch them out if they are out of position. 
Righteous Glory allows you to do that basically without using your flash, which is an amazing resource to have. Also, Dead, Man pl Dead Man's Plate does similar things. It makes you a bit more tanky. It is a bit more of a selfish survival sort of item, but it does very similar things to Righteous Glory and is sort of a, an awesome default fallback item that you can always buy if you don't know what else to buy. And the final armor item that I do enjoy quite a bit on Rammus is Frozen Heart. This item gives you 20% CDR, which is surprisingly significant for Rammus. Most people heavily underestimate what uh, cooldown reduction can do for the uptime on Rammus's W. It makes a huge difference. That being said, it is really the armor and the attack speed reduction aura that is uh, the reason you're buying this item. This item is great for countering not just AD champions, which is also true, but also champions like Azir and Kale can get hardcore screwed by this item because they need the attack speed. Also, this item is great against Kai'Sa, who needs the attack speed just the same. Speaking of those kinds of champions, let's cover Adaptive Helm. Adaptive Helm is an amazing counter for certain champions, I do believe it counters Kale and Azir and Kai'Sa, like I just mentioned, but I know for a fact that it also counters more traditional mages, uh, DOT mages, such as Brand, Cassiopeia, Rumble especially. If you're playing against Rumble and you're not buying Adaptive Helm, you're basically trolling. Now, for the final items, Abyssal Mask, another amazing item for Rammus. Most of Rammus' uh, damage is actually magic damage. He does have some physical damage through his auto attacks, but his Q, his W, and his ultimate is all magic damage. Not to mention, Cinderhulk Burn plus Thornmail is also magic damage. Not to mention, it increases the magic damage of your entire team if they are nearby. So if you have a hardcore AP mage in the mid lane, then Abyssal Mask is just never bad for your team. Is always going to help in a team fight. Well, unless that person dies instantly, I suppose. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's a great item. And the final tank item slash magic resist option that I want to mention that you do have on Rammus is Spirit Visage. Number one, if you're facing like three or four hard magic damage dealers on the enemy team and you just want to build as much magic damage as possible, resist as possible, then you can build Adaptive Helm and Abyssal Mask and Spirit Visage, and you're going to be sitting pretty on that. Having said that, Spirit Visage can actually be the superior MR choice to Abyssal and Adaptive Helm, given the correct circumstance. It sort of depends on whether you have a lot of healing on your team and whether or not you're getting Ocean Drakes. If you have a Soraka on your team, always buy Spirit Visage. It's amazing. If you have two or three Ocean Drakes, even just one Ocean Drake actually, with Spirit Visage, makes a noticeable difference in your region. And most people heavily, heavily undervalue not just Ocean Drakes in general, but especially the synergy between Ocean Drakes and Spirit Visage. It's basically a, a smaller Warmox, but that also works on your mana sustain, which is just amazing. So those are essentially the options that you have for Rammus. And I think that about covers it all. If you want to be super creative and you're just like goofing around in normal games and stuff, then you, what you can do is you can maybe you can try out uh, stuff like Rylai's Leandres and see if you enjoy it. Funny detail about that is that um, if you have your W activated and people auto attack you, they actually get slowed from Rylai's and of course the damage from uh, Leandres applies. So <laughs> I have tried this before personally in normal games and. I'll be honest, I find it downright hilarious. I think it's a, it's a very fun build, so you can try that if you want. I'm not sure if you want to, you know, carry this into high elo ranked games, but uh, if nothing else, it's very amusing. And with that being said, I think that is everything that you need to know about Rammus. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. And Riot Games, please... Do something to lower the ban rate on this champion. We want to play Rammus again.